Hello everybody and uh, welcome to my video. Um, little background here, I'm starting on a 16 by 20 stretched canvas. Uh, I bought one of those uh, pre-painted black gesso canvases from Michaels and uh, I went in and um, I sandpapered it uh, to get it smooth and I re uh some more black over the top just to kind of start with this this black background and I'm coming back with my with just a bristle brush I'm um, just kind of creating some streaking here uh, kind of going into my golds my oranges my browns um, not putting a lot of paint on the brush because I want a lot of that background black to show through and I'm coming back um, with uh, my uh, actually I'm not even quite sure what I what this brush is this brush just has some some teeth on it um, and it kind of makes these nice fine uh, lines here but what I'm trying to accomplish here is I'm trying to um, just kind of create some wood grain here uh, kind of going back here and I want to kind of create the effect of a of a wooden table and I'm using my black acrylic paint pen um, to to draw a straight line and uh, just to put some texture into the wood um, stippling on some golds with my cad yellow and cad orange and, and, and titanium white create a nice little gold color and just sort of uh, stippling on a little more texture with that lighter color as well I want to kind of create some wood grain uh, some knots uh, and, and just little divots in the wood, which is kind of what I'm trying to go for. Um, but I want to get that all worked in first because um, obviously we have our little girl leaning on the table and we've got this candle, so it's just easier to bring kind of that background uh, in real quickly and then I can bring in this, uh, this candle. So I um, wanted to get this all kind of put in first. Um, and we'd save our little girl for last. So I'm using a, a carbon black um, right now and uh, just kind of painting and blocking in my little candle base here. i uh, be using a lot of small brushes um, for this, a lot of little detail work, uh, mostly using my uh, 10 over zero and my 20 over zero brushes. And um, and getting this all blocked in. So uh, from that I've uh, created a sort of a purple, kind of a dark purple. I've actually mixed dioxazine purple with a uh, little cad yellow. Since they're complement colors, that yellow will help to gray out uh, that, that purple. Um, and then I can get that color blocked in. This is just the melted wax uh, from the candle. So I'll block all this in first. I'm doing all this in acrylic, uh, which I think is noteworthy to mention. Um, that uh, all my primary blocking will will be done in acrylic. I'll bring in a lot of um, detail in acrylic, but I'll finish everything up with my oils, which I'll kind of talk about here in a little bit. So right now it's just easier to get everything blocked in real fast. Um, it'll dry quickly. I'll be able to continue to keep working and layering color um, as I go. So we're going to get the little cuff uh, from the dress kind of painted in. It's just white, so I'm just using a pure titanium white. I uh, want to get that kind of worked in and around since that's going to be behind the candle. Uh, I'm just trying to think methodically about how I'm going to approach this. Um, and working from back to front uh, usually easier. I I uh, do need to take some time though and be a little careful with my strokes. I want to be able to work around everything so that uh, we don't have anything kind of kind of running in or bleeding over into into other objects. So so now I'm just going to kind of focus some time on this candle and um, kind of create the illusion that we've got a little bit of a of a glow here. Um, in the candle itself. I'm going to use my airbrush um, and I've mixed uh, just a little a little orange acrylic paint into the brush here and I'm going to just gently kind of haze this this color on, create some 
little halo effect um, and then I'll just keep kind of working it. I've kind of gone into a, a gold mixture and a little bit of a light yellow uh, mixture with my airbrush and just uh, will continue to kind of work and refine this this little um, glow and, and this halo effect. Um, this can be achieved uh, without an airbrush of course but uh, I just have a hard time getting those nice soft effects so I just prefer to use the airbrush which will be the only time in this painting that I'll be pulling that out so now I can kind of rework my candle once again and kind of bring those colors back in uh, the oranges um, and, and the whites and the yellows so um, <clears throat> Again, I'm going to continue to kind of just work this and layer this and uh, try to do some soft transition of color. As I work with uh, my acrylics, I tend to uh, do a lot of dry brush blending since these acrylics will dry very quickly and I don't have a lot of, of luxury of blending time. So um, just kind of going back and reworking some things. I'm using very little paint on this brush and again this is a small round 0 over 10 brush. I've got several of these that I'll be using and, and working but um, I like to uh, bring in a lot of this detail and I just need these small brushes so that I can achieve uh, the control uh, that I need as I create these strokes. So now I've gone back into that yellow purple mixture and I've just highlighted it a little more with a little more orange and a little more white and uh, just kind of bringing in a little bit of a lighter uh, value to that purple mixture and coming in now I'm just starting to add a little bit more detail of this drippy melty candle wax and um, just kind of bring in these subtle little brush strokes. This will be kind of the first level of detail uh, that we want to kind of introduce um, as we as we kind of um, construct the form of this melted wax. There will be a lot of little drippy effects here that uh, we want to simulate. And uh, you want to make sure not to kill that underpainting. That, that underpainting is going to really work for you. And I'm still using that purple mixture, but I've gone in and added a little carbon black to it to kind of darken it so I can get some additional, um, just a, some additional shadowing into the darkest parts of, of the candle and uh, in the uh, in the wax. And just kind of jumping around here and finding pockets of darkness that uh, I see. Um, in my reference photo to to bring all this together but slowly building from dark to light um, there's gonna now be a little bit more of our sort of a silver lining I've created that uh, gold mixture with orange and yellow and white and uh, now I'm coming back here and I'm adding kind of a third level of highlight now um, and that'll start to help to really shape this and kind of create that three-dimensional feel about this. And so I'll continue to kind of work this um, and, and lighten this up as it gets closer to the top of the candle wick. Um, it's going to definitely be a lot brighter and going to have a lot more just um, white and yellow, just kind of creating a real pale yellow. Um, so that it really kind of gives that effect that it's closer to the flame and uh, so that's going to be the brightest uh, source of light. So you need to just kind of keep that in mind as, as we kind of uh, build this out. So <clears throat> I'm kind of working again behind on the sleeve here. This is just her arm in the background and I just wanted to kind of bring in a little bit of those wrinkles um, in the fabric. Uh, just wanted to make sure that uh, we get that all kind of placed in there before we kind of proceed with um, constructing this candle. So um, we've kind of got the handle here now and, uh, and the actual candle itself, the candle holder, and it's going to be a lot in shadow. There's going to be a lot of um, a lot of just silhouette here. It's obviously is a very dark painting 
And so just need some really subtle highlights uh, just to kind of show a little bit of three-dimensionality and, and some reflected uh, highlights as well, which I'm just using kind of a pale um, blue-gray color for that. And now I'm just kind of coming back and really sort of just refining. I wanted to get a little bit more of an orange kind of uh, reflected light coming here at the base of this drippy uh, candle wax. And I'm also kind of um, bringing in a little bit of Indian yellow. And uh, I'm really just, I kind of created a wash with my acrylic and I wanted just to bring that wash over the candle because I kind of felt like I wasn't quite achieving the actual color that I needed it to be. Um, so these washes work uh, really well to kind of adjust the color. I could have waited until I moved into my uh, oil paints and I could have created a glaze and done the exact same thing, but it can also be achieved with um, just really thinning your color with uh, water and um, that way a lot of the background will show through and you can still get the color adjusted and that's kind of what I've done here. So I'm um, going to move into uh, our little girl now. I want to start with the hat um, and you'll see that I'm just kind of kind of just scumbling this on. Um, I'm not using an enormous amount of color on the brush. I am using pure titanium white but as I um, as I just paint this on, I can still let some of that background on that black show through and and that can kind of start to create some natural shadowing as um as I just um, don't you know color cover it with a lot of paint and uh, in the shadowed part of of her bonnet here uh, I've just kind of mixed kind of a uh, a very pale um, sort of orange white color. Um, I did want some of that candle reflection to go into the shadowed region so it's just a really minute amount of kind of an orange grayish color that I've mixed together here. And right now it's just kind of blocking this in, figuring out where um, a lot of the folds are going to live here and, um, and just with this basic general uh, blocking in phase. We can at least kind of start to figure out um, what our color schemes are going to be and and uh, we can kind of work from from the shadow to the light region but it'll be really kind of subtle transitions from the back to the front. The front's going to obviously be uh, facing um, the light source so it's going to be a lot brighter here. But uh, right now it's just kind of blocking in these folds uh, in the fabric of her little bonnet. And uh, you know, I, this would be sort of uh, maybe a little, a little Puritan girl, a little um, Amish girl, Quaker girl, I don't know. Um, a lot of them kind of dress similarly, but very kind of, kind of um, 1800s like, uh, you know, and, and um, that's kind of what I was going for here is, is you know, maybe this is a, a girl from from history and um, and so uh, that's sort of what I was, the effect I was just trying to make here. Okay, so now just kind of starting to really distinguish our lights and our darks here and um, after these get kind of blocked in, this is of course a block in with acrylic paint. Um, and later on I can come back and I can begin to add some of my oils and that'll really kind of soften those edges a little bit more and, and really kind of embolden some of the highlights as well as mute a lot of the, um, a lot of the shadows. So working through this, uh, really kind of highlighting a little bit more with my titanium white. Um, and as I, as I add the white a little bit thicker, um, it naturally kind of highlights that, th those sections, but still retains some of that darker, um, kind of shadowed region that uh, we, we've already created with that thinner paint that we put uh, in the beginning. Uh, just a handy technique that um, as you paint uh, thicker over the thinner sections it will just naturally 
sort of create a highlight that um, works pretty effectively to start to to um, really kind of create those folds in the fabric. And that's all we're just trying to figure out right now. Um, again, the refining stage can come a little bit later, but I'm, I'm just trying to get this mostly complete um, with my acrylic paints because they, they are very effective and they dry really quickly and I can just keep working this. I will be using Algod oil paints, which also dry very fast, but obviously they, they dry a little slower than, than acrylics. And, and with that in mind, um, I'll just save those for the very end. But uh, I do enjoy the block-in phase with acrylics and, um, and then introducing oils at the very end. I think so. for me anyway, a really effective way of, of achieving the effects that I'm kind of looking for. So again, we're just kind of going back and we're trying to um, more or less just kind of color match here. I'm kind of darkening some regions and I'm lightening other regions and I'm adding some subtle highlights um, in and around. I'm just right now just kind of scrutinizing my reference material and trying to approximate uh, what I'm seeing in the photograph um, and, and really kind of getting that a little bit more close uh, on my canvas. So we're kind of uh, coming in here and I'm darkening things. I'm actually created another wash with my acrylic to uh, go over those shadows. And now I'm using a felt tip pin. These pins are really handy. You got a really fine tip. And uh, I'm just kind of creating some of the texture in the fabric I'm seeing. These, these little hats, they um, have, uh, they're kind of porous. Um, the, the fabric, um, seems to have these sort of these little uh, dots that are all over the the bonnet and um, I'm just trying to go in here now and, and get those kind of kind of added so it does take a little bit of time but I think it adds a lot of realism to uh, to the painting now I've mixed um, kind of an olive green. I've gone into my uh, cadmium red and added um, my sap green and created this olive green. And um, her dress is going to kind of be a green color. So uh, I'm going to start to kind of build on this. I want to get this far uh, distant arm that's kind of behind to uh, kind of get it blocked in and I can s kind of subtly, slowly add uh, highlights. I've gone into my uh, um, cad yellow and a little bit more titanium white into that green olive mixture and, um, and that's what I'm using as my highlights. It's pretty simple though, I don't need to go into a lot of detail. Like I said, I can go back into the dress later with my oil paints and I can I can bring in some oils and I can really improve upon um, these brush strokes and I can really soften uh, a bit later with the uh, oil paints because I've just got a longer drying time in a longer blending time uh, which will allow for that that luxury but uh, going to the same color um, and uh, getting the other the other arm now there's a lot of folds in the fabric and um, I'm just going to use a lot of that dark um, black gesso background uh, and, and kind of use it to my advantage. I'm, I'm tr trying to make sure that I'm not killing it all and, and uh, that way I don't have to work quite as hard by um, trying to go in and, and add my shadows and then adding my highlights. I can just kind of go in and just do the highlighting right now. But as I um, just use minimal paint on the brush, um, it'll allow more of that background to show through and it can kind of naturally create those shadows again. And then just going and kind of subtly changing my value, highlighting with my yellows and my whites um, to, to get that bit of a brighter um, olive green effect. And that'll start to add a little bit more dimension and a little bit more realism to uh, to these clothes. 
And so that's kind of the method to the madness here. There's going to be a lot of shadow. Um, and and um, it's going to sort of, um, if, I, if I allow for just some very subtle brush strokes, um, it can sort of insinuate uh, that, that a lot of her, her arm uh, is really going to be moved into shadow as it kind of moves away from the candlelight. So it'll kind of stay true to that real kind of dark uh, undertones and, of the painting. So I'll just kind of complete this uh, little sleeve now in these little cuffs that uh, are on the dress. And um, then we'll be about, about ready to start moving into the face. So adding more carbon black to kind of get my shadows and I wanted to get the, the reflected shadow on the, uh, on the table, uh, which I'm kind of putting in right now, get all that worked in so I can really kind of focus on the main part of the painting, which is going to be our little girl's face and hands. Um, and we can kind of work on that expression. That's going to be the most time-consuming part of, of all the painting. So I just wanted to save it for the very end. So I've uh, gone now and I'm, I'm using my standard uh, five or six colors I've got uh, on my palette right now. And I'm, again, I'm still using acrylic, but um, I've mixed together yellow and red and um, umber, ultramarine blue, and um, a little titanium white. And I've kind of created this real kind of dark, um, I don't even know, just a dark flush tone. Um, and then I'm, I've come back and changed the value by adding a little bit more um, of the reds and yellows and whites to that so that I can lighten it up. And I'm going to try to come in here and just block in some, some basic highlights and basic shadows that I just want to start with. And by doing this, uh, it's going to make my life a lot easier just to get some of these standard underpainting flesh tones. I'm, what I'm trying to do is I'm trying to find kind of the mid, the mid value uh, in the color. So I'm looking at my reference photo and I'm finding kind of the mid flesh tone colors in the highlights and also the mid flesh tones in the shadows. And then I can bring those in right now. And um, I'll do a couple layers of this uh, because um, you can still kind of see the brush strokes and you can see the, the dark underpainting. So I'll, I'll just kind of go through this three or four times uh, introducing these colors because I want to get rid of all those brush strokes um, because I'm going to use a lot of this underpainting uh, to assist me as I start to use my oil palette. So that's what we're going to do. I'm going to kind of finish up here uh, with these uh, kind of orangey colors for the flesh and uh, kind of block all this in, find some some general basic um, shadows, uh, colors that I can bring in as well. Uh, but again, kind of all mid-tones, it's all done in acrylic. And uh, we'll just uh, get a few different layers of color and get rid of those brush strokes, kind of soften some things. And then I can bring in some of the eyes and then mouth and we'll be ready to move to the, uh, to the oil palette. But uh, I find that uh, when I do kind of portrait work, um, I've, I've tried various different styles of portrait work um, and I just uh, kind of stumbled on on this one. Um, I just kind of had this epiphany that I try it this way and I really like the, the way this works. I know a lot of artists don't do this but uh, but I, I like doing it this way. So, so kind of get all this kind of worked in right now, get the eyes and um, and we'll be kind of ready to go, but again, keep it kind of muted. Uh, use a lot of your gray tones, and um, then uh, we can add all the highlights with our with our oil palette. So I'm still using acrylic acrylic paint right now. I'm just kind of finishing this up. I wanted to bring in a little bit more highlights to the eyes, and um, kind of bring in a little bit more uh, detail. Um, and, and this is, we're just about done here though with, with our acrylic palette. But I wanted to bring in some of the, some of those highlights and, uh, kind of get this all kind of figured out. So 
kind of take my time on this this eye here. Um, this eye obviously is going to be a, a primary feature and really bring in a lot of character to uh, our little girl. Um, so I'm just kind of taking my time using my small brushes. Um, a lot of detail here. Um, but now I've uh, I've gone ahead and I've changed my palette now. I'm using my acrylic or my oil palette. Um, use my five colors that we've already mentioned. And now I'm just um, really coming back now and I'm starting to figure out where all my highlights uh, are going to be. And uh, I've kind of mixed a few different piles of color uh, with my five colors. Let me just mention those five colors real quick again. Um, titanium white, um, burnt umber, um, ultramarine blue, cad red, cad yellow. Um, and that's about it. I actually did put a little bit of uh, carbon black on my palette as well. I'm going to want to use that just a little bit too, but uh, I've, I've kind of mixed five or six different flesh tone piles um, now, and, and but I've really kept them really red and orange in nature. I've kind of used a lot more of my reds and oranges because um, I want to kind of continue with that theme um, of this real dark painting or this re real dark kind of scene uh, where most of the the light source is just coming from this bright candle. So um, kind of tended to move more into my my oranges and reds here on this. But going through these these pre-mixed paints make it a lot easier. I like to kind of have it all done and, and squared away on my on my palette and then it's uh, much easier to go in and kind of mix colors and and have some of these ready to go already. So um, I'm using a small filbert brush. I find that these filbert brushes are really great. Um, I want to continue to kind of soften as I'm as I go so I'm just kind of uh, adding this, kind of scumbling it on, and I'm kind of moving the paint around and and um, as the paint transfers from the brush to the palette and it starts to remove off the bristles, um, naturally starts to soften and blend as I go and that's kind of what I'm trying to do. I'm going to do all this in one single sitting uh, where we can get the, the face and the hands about, about 95% uh, done all in one single sitting. Now this painting took me about 12 hours, honestly. When I when I equate um, the the entire time that I that I put into it, from uh, starting the acrylic uh, underpainting uh, up to the point that I transferred over to my to my oil palette. Um, but I knew that uh, I wanted it to spend one you know solid sitting, which was a few hours. Uh, just with my uh, oil palette here and um, and just get it all mostly done in one sitting. So I, I kind of did that by design. Um, so I'm, I'm again, I'm using my tiny little 20 over zero brush to, uh, you know, going between the filbert, which kind of covers the large surface areas and then my small 20 over zero round brush for the really fine, uh, little detail work that I'm trying to accomplish here. So, um, and that's mostly through the eyes and, and the eyebrows, the lips, and, the, and kind of the nose regions where I'm mostly using that. For the most part, I, I use my filbert brush to, to get around and um, uh, some of the larger surface areas. And then it's just a lot quicker that way to move. and. You know, these portraits, they do take time and, and you're going through a lot of different color variations and there's a lot of blending that's taking place. Um, so, um, so you know, it, it, just, uh, it just takes time. And I try to cut corners where I can. So pre-mixing my palette is one way to cut the corners and, and using larger filbert brushes uh, kind of is another quick way to cut some corners. The important thing is that I'm just kind of trying to make sure I'm, I'm matching all the values that I'm seeing.
Now for the lips, I kind of, uh, I brought in, I actually did add a little bit of um, alizarin crimson to my palette as well. And um, I wanted to start the underpainting sort of with uh, a little bit more alizarin into the lips, um, mixed with just a small amount of, of carbon black. And um, then I've just changed the value subtly to kind of create this nice uh, rose color, kind of uh, pink, rosy color that uh, we can use for the highlights. So as I kind of bring all this in and kind of figure out for the most part where uh, a lot of the colors are going to be and, and a lot of the shadowing and highlighting, um, I will get this as close to approximate as I can from my reference material, but uh, I will go back and, and add some uh, nice glazes. Um, and what I noticed is after I kind of painted this in that I needed it to be a little bit, a little bit more of an ochre color, and so I I, I did put a little ochre into my um, in, into my glaze and uh, went over and and kind of gave that ochre kind of yellowish uh, tone to the to the entire face region. That way, it kind of it kind of mimicked um, you know again that that soft candlelight glow. Um, and that that was uh, just a, a bit of a color change I needed to make to get it a little bit more uh, in line with my reference photo. So bringing in the hair now and uh, just using a, a small rigger brush uh, to do that. I'm you know I'm kind of jumping between uh, carbon black and then I mix together a little bit of uh, sienna. Um, to kind of as it kind of gets closer to the light it's a little more on the sienna side and then um, for for contrast went back to the blacks over the whites and um, and then as it kind of gets close to the candlelight I, I actually went into a uh, just a titanium white that way it looks a little brighter but it also adds a little bit of contrast kind of rosying up her cheek a little bit with some of that um, alizarin crimson. I wanted to, to get a little bit rosier uh, around her cheeks, a little on her nose, and a little bit around her eyes as well. She's wearing these little earrings, so uh, I just mixed a little gray color here with blue and, and umber and, uh, and kind of created our, our little earrings. So pretty simple brush strokes here. And, and now I can kind of move into the hand region, but by having the that kind of pumpkin color underpainting, um, you want to let that really work to your advantage. I'm going to let a lot of this underpainting show through as you can kind of see and just kind of bring in the subtle highlights kind of in and around but um, you know she had a lot of, a lot of red in her hands and I wanted to kind of stay true to that and and you just don't need to you know overwork this or kill yourself trying to uh, trying to bring all those colors in uh, later on so it's better to to bring in those uh, underpaintings now and this is where my my mid-tone uh, underpainting really really helps a ton um, and, and I just don't have to work nearly as hard uh, this way so I, I just like these little shortcuts uh, they, they work out really well but just kind of jumping back and forth and I'll just keep, kind of keep building color here. Uh, uh, you know, I, I've mixed this, uh, this, this little soft flesh tone. It's a little bit more blue, a little, little more um, umber and yellow into this uh, kind of mid-tone. And then um, when I go into my lighter highlights, I, I really just have um, a lot more red, yellow, and, and white but much more on the white side so that uh, it really it really brightens it up quite a bit. And so I can keep kind of working, working around that. She has a lot of skin folds um, in the knuckle regions, um, so I'm kind of looking, looking at that as well. <coughs> Excuse me. And, um, and just really kind of thinking about the shape of this hand and the knuckles. And, but mostly where, you know, where the highlights really are. I mean, these are close to the light source and um, 
And so I'm really just trying to trying to think about about that as I come in here. But this is kind of the general process I like to take. I'm getting close to being, you know, to being mostly done with her other than my glazes. Uh, so after I finish uh, these hands, um, I'll, I'll go ahead and start with a series of glazes. And, and I've made, I make quite a few. I, I, of course, make the ochre glaze. Uh, I also come in with a dark uh, sort of uh, umber and um, charcoal black or carbon black. Um, as well uh, glaze and um, I also kind of start to work on her uh, on her dress as well so I'm coming back with some highlights and I'm just kind of trying to brighten up some some regions and um, and, and really just kind of try to capture that last kind of kind of highlight here at the very end bring in more of her hair um, and uh, so just a, a couple simple brush strokes here and I've, I've mixed kind of a, uh, a dark kind of gray since it's more in shadow, but uh, just enough that you can kind of see the, uh, the hair kind of poking through her hat there and around her shoulders. All right, so at this point, um, I'm getting ready to kind of do the glazing. Um, and I'm just adding some some final sort of highlights. I'm using you know pure titanium white here for the bonnet and the sleeves and and the cuffs. Uh, but now this is where I kind of bring in that ochre. So this is my first glaze. I wanted to get it a little yellower um, to kind of mimic more the the mood and the tone of, of this painting. So coming all over with this ochre color, um, very very transparent so that it really shows through. And um, I've also kind of glazed in a little bit more highlight too. I'm kind of scumbling on this glazed highlight. And then I'm kind of moving into the shadow now uh, with a little bit more of the reds and the, and the umbers. Um, and then I've, I've mixed my, my blue and, and black to create a little bit more shadowing. So I can go in there and kind of get a little richer on the shadows, <clears throat> you know, around the... Uh, around the, the cheek and under the hands and so forth. Um, and, and that really kind of helps me to get more approximate to uh, my reference material. It's just a nice little finisher and I can, I can correct my, uh, my colors so that they're a little bit more accurate. Now I've come back with uh, carbon black and I'm kind of scumbling that on with some glaze. And that just really adds a little more richness to those shadows as well, and we can get a little bit better contrast going here. So I'm getting closer to my painting. I appreciate you uh, tuning in. Please subscribe. And with that, I'll uh, leave, it, leave you uh, and uh, happy painting. Thanks so much. Goodbye.